morning everyone <laughs> nice sir have, have a great day from all over the world i believe you are doing great and uh, today i'm your host my name is sharia choudhury and uh, can you see my uh, slide not yet sir sorry Now, can see my slide? Yes, sir. It's on now. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you so much uh, having with me. Have a great day. And my name is Shaharia Choudhury. I'm lecturer at Friends of Sankla University. My research expert actually is uh, solar energy, solar recycling, e-waste, and solar photovoltaic recycling. So today I'm going to discuss about uh, solar photovoltaic energy. And uh, our discussion uh, after, after my lecture, we will discuss, uh, we will collaborate and we discuss each other, how could um, make a new policy. And uh, before start my session, would you mind, can you open your camera so it can maybe interact each other? Today our discussion about uh, climate change, why climate change, and uh, also the we'll know about uh, the solar photovoltaic history, technology, market share, and manufacturers like uh, different countries. How uh, how is the market? And also we'll know about the solar application where we can apply solar uh, solar energy and uh, how can it help us uh, to develop for uh, how can it help us for sustainable development that all from all from uh, we can i will discuss about that so before go to the solar energy i would like to show about some scenario about the world energy demand because we know that uh, for our current uh, 21st century, we are developing uh, technology and also we, we are, um, we, we try to, uh, we try to, um, uh, we try to uh, change our living style and we try, um, new, new device, uh, lots of things so how could it possible because of uh, for all things actually from uh, energy we need energy so how could it? there are many uh, sources of energy like uh, coal oil and natural gas nuclear and other uh, also renewable energy sources so we can see also the uh, uh, maximum uh, energy sources from uh, coal and oil-based power station. And third position is natural gas. Nuclear gas also uh, currently some, some of country, they are focusing nuclear, uh, nuclear power station. But the uh, problem is that nuclear waste is very dangerous and radiation, nuclear radiation also not good for human health and environment and uh, coal and oil we know that uh, the uh, co2 emission from uh, coal and uh, um, oil based power station and uh, at the at the same time also the resources we we need to think about our resources how can we cover it uh, because uh, in future generation uh, they may not have that kind of resources to utilize uh, for, for, um, for generate the electricity. So that's why we have to think about that. So when we try to develop our um, 
energy uh, and our technology. So it's sort of things like uh, um, destroy our environment. destroy our environment, we can see that uh, this is the USA scenario. So we can see that 82% carbon dioxide uh, they, they are reducing. And uh, we also can see that maximum from 28% from transportation, 28 from electricity and also industry. So we know that they are develop, uh, they already developed their technology and they try to go to like uh, space uh, they try to do many things so, but at the same time we have the problem is that uh, um, co2 emotion so uh, in usa they are they, they that is the big problem now and we can see also that china uh, there are three or four countries they're trying to develop a technology and also at the same time they destroy our environment we can see that uh, china United States and uh, Russia, they, they, they also, most of, most of the part, they, are, um, they polluted our environment. And uh, our developing countries, we are suffering the problem. So how could it possible if we do not, uh, and, and we can see. What happened? How, how, how can, I don't know. Sorry for that. And we can see also that uh, CO2 emission yearly from 1750 to is uh, gradually increased. And after 1950, it was dramatically increased. And now almost 35 billion ton per year. Can you imagine that? Why climate change? That is the big reason. So if we do not protest it, and uh, if we will not protest it, what happen in future? Sir, if I may, um, these 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 big countries or these developed countries, if I may, sir, please, um, these developed countries need to be held accountable for what is actually happening because, like you said, they're um, emitting most of the CO two into the environment, which is speeding up the climate change or global warming. And developing countries, or the like, the like, small developing countries, we're actually feeling the blunt of it and nobody is actually saying nothing about it. I think the world needs to actually hold these people accountable. Um, one of the things um, already in the course we talk about is um, in the program, mm -hmm. we talk about incentives for using um, alternative energy. All right, sorry, sir. Sorry. I, I, I uh, we, we may just wanted uh, to hear that, sorry. Call you end the session, okay? This is the starting. <laughs> it's okay. And then we can we can see that what happens and also increase the temperature and increase the uh, sea level and uh, deforestation and uh, also the um, people uh, people uh, loss also the harvest and uh, we also um, we, we cannot do any um, like uh, due to the increase the temperature people uh, many many disease so, so that is the scenario actually so if we uh, if we not uh, think about now so we have to face that kind of scenario in future most so is there any solution yes we know that problem we have problem and we have also the solution We, there, uh, how can we uh, protest it? There is the uh, renewable energy. We can, instead of coal, oil, and uh, natural gas, we can use renewable energy, such as uh, hydro, hydro, and uh, um, 
biomass, solar. So solar energy is the most cheapest and also the most promoting energy currently. So we can we can promote it and uh, that is the big solution for us uh, for a future sustainable development. So what is the solar energy? What is the solar cell, photovoltaic cell? So solar cell is a called a photovoltaic cell. It's any device directly converted energy of light into the electrical energy through to the photovoltaic effect. So here we can see the uh, solar uh, solar device there is a like a terminal is a, a, a terminal is, is one kind of circuit so how does it work we can see also that it's a, a receive sunlight and it make it um, a photon and electron and uh, we, we we receive the electricity from sunlight so there is a uh, there and uh, we there are many kind of solar cell in the world uh, later on, I will discuss it. So how does solar panel work? Uh, solar panel actually uh, PN junction uh, is the one kind of P-type and N-type silicon, but normally currently uh, silicon-based solar cell available uh, in the world. And it's uh, like P-type and N-type silicon and it create a PN junction and we receive the electricity. History of solar cell. Uh, the solar uh, research is not uh, now, it's um, from long time ago, almost, uh, uh, 1839 uh, in Mont uh, Bakurel, he first time uh, discovered the solar photovoltaic uh, uh, energy, and he 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 discussed also the solar. Uh, what is the solar? Uh, how can we utilize it? And generation by generation, Albert Einstein also he explained uh, the photovoltaic effect uh, in uh, 1905 and. Uh, also, in uh, 1941, Grendel developed the photovoltaic cell based on the uh, copperous excite uh, solar cell. Uh, he, he reported that. And uh, finally, 1954, uh, successfully, United States, uh, they, um, they announced uh, the solar, uh, solar silicon-based solar cell with a 6% efficiency. That was the big achievement in 1954. So this is the uh, solar, uh, uh, solar radiation. There are many kind of uh, radiation like X-ray um, uh, or ultraviolet, uh, also the infrared. So this is the, we can visible range only this one. And uh, the range uh, from uh, 200 to one, 100, uh, yeah, 1,000, uh, 1,200 uh, nanometer. So there are many kind of things and uh, solar radiation is from which is the use uh, described visible and is, uh, is, is visible and also the radiation is uh, emitted from the sun. And uh, the solar radiation is uh, which is uh, described from a uh, infrared is uh, not visible it's uh, uh, the uh, the limitation of uh, only atmosphere we cannot see it so that's why we cannot use it and on, on the other hand the solar radiation which is uh, incident outside of atmosphere called uh, the uh, terrestrial solar radiation and uh, the terrestrial solar radiation is different because of the earth uh, rotate around the sun and uh, elliptical orbits and uh, hence it is the sometime nearest uh, the, to the sun. While on the other time, it is uh, at a distant place of the sun. Here we, we, we can see the same, uh, same things, uh, the visible point. Uh, visible point is uh, from uh, 250 to uh, 12, uh, 1250. So 
that that reasons um, we uh, normally uh, silicon based solar cell they they can uh, they can absorb uh, from two, uh, 300 to 500 and then uh, currently um, the parvoskai solar cell they can absorb uh, absorb uh, almost uh, 500 700 500 to 700 There are uh, many kind of absorber layer materials. Uh, those can absorb the sunlight and uh, like um, <laughs> germanium, acetone, acetate, and uh, germanium, silicon, and uh, CDE, cadmium telluride, CDS, and uh, uh, also the silicon based. But uh, 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 germanium acetone is used for the, it's very expensive and uh, very high, high efficiency, but it, it, it was used for, it is used for the satellite because uh, due to the, the expensive materials we use for satellite. But uh, commercially only uh, available CDTE, uh, cadmium telluride, thin film, and uh, also the silicon based solar cell. Solar energy, uh, there are um, three kind of uh, generation, uh, like uh, monocrystal, polycrystal, um, uh, silicon-based solar cell, crystalline silicon solar cell. It's like for a monocrystal and polycrystal. Second generation solar cell is amorphous silicon, multi-junction silicon, uh, multi-junction uh, CDS and uh, cadmium telluride. And also the CIGS, the third gener uh, second generation solar cell. Third generation solar cell uh, concentrator uh, photovoltaic, disensodized, perovskite, or hybrid solar cell. But um, silicon based solar cell now currently available in the market. Maximum is silicon based solar cell. And uh, also the thin film, uh, like uh, second generation, it's also the second position is uh, like uh, amorphous silicon. Some in Japan, some Japanese company, they are fabricate the uh, amorphous silicon. Or, uh, and uh, CDTE, only one company they produce. Uh, later on, I'll discuss about that. And uh, the third generation solar cell is a parvoskite solar cell, and uh, also other disensitized solar cell efficiency is not too much. So that's why now um, uh, current world uh, focus on the parvoskite solar cell because it uh, within short time is to achieve a highest efficiency, uh, almost 20, 25, more than 25, because uh, parvoskite solar cell uh, discovered not too much time. And we can see the module of a uh, solar cell, like uh, first generation solar cell is look like this and uh, second generation solar cell. Uh, what is the difference between first generation, second generation? First generation uh, solar cell uh, thickness is uh, one micron, one, one, one micron, one to two micron, but uh, second generation solar cell is uh, 500 uh, to 700, uh, nanometer so so that's why it's very thin, thin and uh, um, that is the difference uh, between and also the first generation uh, second generation solar cell efficiency uh, is not expensive also and third generation solar cell uh, thickness is uh, almost uh, uh, 300 nanometer to 500 nanometer it's not too much and uh, this is the disensodized uh, disensodized solar cell it's like uh, transparent, uh, we can call also transparent uh, solar cell. Uh, we can use it for uh, on the glass, glass like uh, a building, but the efficiency is not uh, too much. That's why it's still now under consideration, like under research. And in future, it would be available. So first generation solar cell, uh, first generation solar cell, there is a only one layer, and uh, and one layer they when they deposit when they deposit the silicon, they use uh, the gas and that gas uh, can make a silicon a p-type and n-type junction. They created the p-type and n-type junction, and also the they use uh, sodalim glass and uh, for for 
back metal contact will use uh, the um, like uh, for on, on um, back metal contact use uh, um, uh, the silver and uh, um, also the glass uh, we use also the uh, FTO like FTO coated glass or ITO coated glass uh, and uh, also use uh, the anti-reflective coating uh, like uh, for, for, for safety of uh, the stability and we know that uh, first generation solar cell um, lifetime almost 20 to 25 years it's, it depends on the materials also sometime or manufacturer because uh, if we buy some cheaper companies so they have some uh, cheap materials uh, mat purity of materials so that's why you receive uh, lower efficiency like uh, 15 percent even they, they they say that uh, 20 percent efficiency but it's not actually 20 less than 20 and uh, the, the uh, yeah currently this one is available so now we can see actually how first generation uh, solar cell fabricate. Welcome Hello. to the now Solar World Module okay. Production Plant in Freiburg. Every day okay, around the clock, a fully automated production process produces solar modules using four main production steps. Layup production, laminate production, module production, and finishing. A main component of our solar modules is glass. Each day, four trucks deliver 100 tons of the 1.60 times 1 meter large and 4 millimeter thick plates. This safety glass is similar to that used in car windshields and is treated with an anti-reflective coating. The glass plates are fed into the production process automatically. A large washing machine cleans and dries the glass before it is processed. The purity of the glass is an important factor for the efficiency of our solar modules. In the second step, the glass is covered with a so-called EVA film. Later, this film tightly seals the cells, permanently attaching them to the glass. Latest generation computer-assisted conveyor lines intelligently control the production flow. The systems independently recognize which of the eight production lines must be supplied with material. With this design, even maintenance work can be performed at any time without halting production. This process has been developed by the specialists at SolarWorld and is unique worldwide. After they have been checked and sorted according to capacity, our solar cells arrive in the module factory securely packaged in special carriers. Here, they are again checked for any possible damage. A robot connects 10 identical cells in a chain, known as a string. The solar cells are soldered in series, on both the front and back, creating the strings, which can generate about 5 volts of electrical potential. Our employees give close scrutiny to the string before the fully automatic production process continues. Six of these strings, laid next to each other according to the polarity, create a matrix of 60 solar cells. The cell strings are then soldered together in series, so that the module delivers a total power of 245 watts DC. Now properly mounted on film and glass, the future module is sent on to further production steps. It's given a second transparent EVA film. 
and a very robust rear film that resists the system voltage of photovoltaic systems of up to 1000 volts without any problems. The complete package, experts call it a layup, is subjected to additional testing procedures. The electroluminescence measurement, for example, reveals possible hidden cell breakage. The trained eye of our module specialists also helps guarantee consistently high product quality. Properly sorted into groups of four, the modules are now laminated. A look inside the laminator reveals exactly how this works. Glass, films and cells are warmed in a first chamber to approximately 150 degrees Celsius. In the second chamber, the EVA films are melted while the air between the films is removed by a vacuum. Solar glass, solar cells and films form the so-called laminate. The module cools in a third chamber and after approximately 24 minutes, it leaves the laminator as a sealed weather and shock resistant unit. In the following production step, our solar modules receive their patented flat connection sockets. This is a seamless process with welded joints rather than soldered joints, it ensures maximum adhesion even under the highest loads. In the framing station, complete automation also ensures the best quality. The frame elements are given the correctly fitting corners and are filled with a two-component silicone. Pressers then squeeze the frame parts onto the laminate and slot them together with the corner pieces, forming a stable hole. The module must once again prove itself in the flasher. It passes fully automatically through a second electroluminescence test, as well as the insulation and high voltage tests. Power rating is determined and the module is classified under worldwide uniform standard test conditions. In the final production stage, the connection sockets of our solar modules are filled with silicone, which provides protection for the contacts against corrosion and mechanical load. When everything is correct, the connection socket is sealed and the cables are attached. The rear label gives individual information on the type, power rating and production site. A last comparison of all test results and a final visual check by our experienced module specialists guarantees the proven SolarWorld quality. A robot sorts the modules according to their product and power class before they are securely packaged. The finished module pallets are transported by our logistics division to an intermediate storage site or are loaded directly onto trucks. Up to 6,000 solar modules leave our plant in this way every day. This amount would cover one and a half soccer fields and can supply 350 houses with electricity. The production of solar modules can hardly be faster and more energy and cost efficient. And we are thinking further still. Today, our module plant already produces a large part of its own power. This is what we stand for at Solar World. We turn sunlight into power.
now audible so this is the scenario of uh, first generation uh, solar cell silicon based uh, solar cell and the many company um, they are fabricated and this is the second generation solar cell first generation solar cell they have only they doesn't have the direct absorber layer they have only the silicon and they use the gas and that can make a absorber layer at the same time also the p type n type n type junction and uh, produce the electricity the second generation uh, solar cell uh, have the absorber layer and at the same time absorber layer also work as a p-type layer so they use as a absorber layer they use uh, like a cdte cadmium telluride and they absorb the light and uh, the, and also convert p-type and di divided uh, proton and electron p-type and n-type and also they use another layer uh, for for as a cds a cadmium sulfide as a n-type and also back contact uh, they they use uh, the sodalim glass and uh, also the sometimes they use a uh, ftu coated glass for uh, transparent um, and also from uh, they use the front uh, front uh, front contact and uh, sodalim gas and glass uh, and uh, uh, this uh, light put and then uh, it uh, divided p type and n type and produce uh, the uh, electricity so this is the uh, the manufacture process uh, from fast solar and we can we will see now how how does uh, fast solar the fabricate the solar uh, solar panel is it audible now anyone can help me yes sir it's audible yes, it's okay, okay. Yes.
and uh, third uh, perovskite uh, third generation solar cell most promoting and uh, this is the and uh, also the uh, high efficient uh, the perovskite solar cell uh, still now under research uh, perovskite solar cell and perovskite solar cell there are three kind of uh, device uh, Masaika and his research group from Japan, they first introduced uh, Parvoskite uh, solar cell. Uh, it discovered first time 2009. And uh, within uh, 11 years, uh, the Parvoskite solar cell, uh, cell achieved more than 25% uh, efficiency. Currently, it's under research uh, due to the stability issue because um, some some of researchers they say they reported that uh, the stability of perovskite like uh, three months uh, or some of them uh, they want to say that uh, 500 hours uh, the problem is that um, um, uh, if we compare with other solar cell and uh, perovskite perovskite is uh, cheaper and also um, it's also environment friendly and uh, we, we but but, but uh, due to the stability issue it's uh, still under research and uh, here we can see the different type of uh, perovskite solar cell uh, planar inverted and massoporous this is the perovskite absorber layer uh, we use uh, as the absorber layer perovskite uh, perovskite layer is actually the mineral but uh, the structure of perovskite is uh, look like a um, perovskite material uh, uh, it's um, so that's why we call perovskite uh, and the perovskite uh, solar cell uh, absorber layer fabricate like uh, we use methyl AVX3 structure a uh, we use methyl uh, and methyl ammonium uh, totally we use the methyl ammonium iodide and uh, the, this is the perovskite and STM whole transport layer and ETL electron transport layer and electrode uh, we some of uh, research we, we say that uh, gold is very uh, if, uh, effective but uh, the, due to the cost we also use uh, silver and uh, we use a glass uh, and uh, FTO coated glass uh, sometime uh, research some researcher they use a ITO coated glass indium dopetine oxide or some use uh, the um, fluorine dopetine oxide glass and uh, the, the difference between that uh, the reverse of uh, you see we can see that a uh, planar structure uh, stm first electrode then uh, stm and then perovskite layer absorber layer and etl then the fto uh, and then the uh, glass uh, sodalim glass after that but inverted structure uh, totally reverse and uh, first uh, we put uh, the electrode and then uh, after that, we put uh, the ETL layer and perovskite solar cell. Uh, up, after that, the STM and uh, the FTO glass. And uh, massophorous structure, we just uh, use a composite layer perovskite. After ETL, we use massophorous uh, for, uh, for, uh, for increase the stability. But still, it is uh, under research. So this is the actually perovskite. How how does uh, they fabricate the perovskite solar cell? It's a uh, different from first generation and second generation solar cell. So we can see the also the fabrication process. This is the lab scale, uh, lab scale process.
and this one also the how does it transparent uh, solar cell the, uh, this is still uh, actually due to the efficiency so it's not available but uh, how does it work it look like a glass and we can use it uh, like a future solar car they can use it or we can use our window glass and uh, and then we can also uh, gain electricity from that So uh, uh, solar uh, solar and uh, solar photovoltaic cell it's not uh, like uh, only one things and the solar panel also needs support support like uh, solar inverter and uh, also because we receive actually DC voltage so we, we, we need to convert it AC voltage and uh, then switch board we can use it a direct household and at the same time if you want to send to grid or we, we want to uh, save it so we use a multi-mode inverter uh, like uh, again AC to DC and save the battery and we can transfer to generator also so this is the other component uh, this is the part of also the solar energy because we need also the good technology uh, for that uh, for inverter also we need um, uh, good technology otherwise uh, it's a loss uh, system loss will be increased so this is the market share uh, the solar uh, solar energy we can see that uh, in uh, 19, uh, 2014 uh, the market share uh, was uh, 92 percent of silicon solar silicon based solar cell and also the thin film base like a cdte i mentioned earlier uh, it was uh, um, seven percent only and uh, other solar cell like dyson sodites or solar cell paruskite is still now not in commercially available so <clears throat> so uh, it uh, it uh, only one percent and uh, researcher also predict that uh, it, it uh, reduce 73.30% uh, 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 in by end of 2020 it's already gone and uh, um, thin flame uh, will achieve 10.40 uh, 10, uh, 10 already achieve it and uh, other solar cell third generation 16.30 uh, percent but uh, uh, um, according to the report of international renewable energy authority they reported that they predict that uh, by end of 2030 it uh, it will be it might be um, 44.80 percent silicon based solar cell second generation it would be 11.10 uh, percent and the uh, third generation solar cell like uh, dyson satellite or paroskai par solar cell it uh, it would be um 44.10 percent so it makes it uh, 50 50 share first generation and uh, third generation <clears throat> According to the um, NREL, National Renewable Energy um, Authority from USA, uh, the uh, solar efficiency is still now um, silicon-based solar cell 26% uh, 20, and uh, also um, the <coughs> galenium arsenide it's uh, almost 47.1% uh, but due to the uh, expensive material is not uh, available for local market and uh, the Dyson solar cell is not too much almost a uh, 10% <laughs> and, uh, and second generation solar cell CDTE it uh, almost 19% 19% on 22% uh, some lab scale researchers show that uh, say they uh, reported that it's 22 uh, percent but uh, commercially actually due to the material issue it's uh, 15 to 17 percent and parboscar solar cell we know that uh, is still under research but um, it almost uh, 25 percent 20 more than 25 percent so this is the this is the application. So before go to the uh, solar photovoltaic application, may I ask anyone have any question about regarding the material synthesis? 
anyone have any question or any suggestion Anyone have question, sir? No, sir. Thank you, thank you, sir. And uh, this is the application we can apply our telecommunication, agriculture, and uh, rural electrification. You know the. Um, the solar solar panel is very uh, cheaper if we compare that to other renewable energy sources we we need huge budget but solar we can anyone can say, set up their rooftop or uh, or a remote area area or remote island uh, we can use it and uh, for telecommunication radio station we can uh, there are huge application of uh, solar photovoltaic So this is the uh, the future application of uh, solar photovoltaic. Before I go to that, uh, uh, can we go for break or uh, after the video we can go break? After video, sir. Okay, okay, okay. After video. Okay. Thank you. Solar Punk is a sci-fi futuristic view that sees our world and technology being powered by solar. It is a future that is broken away from the fossil-fueled ways of the past and a future that connects humans, technology, and nature together. This video takes a look at the futuristic ways our cities, homes, and lives will be taken over by solar power. Everything from cities filled with solar trees to building drones with solar panels. And what happens when you add robotics and AI to solar panels? Will they be able to start thinking for themselves? And how will that change the solar movement? What other ways are people building solar farms as they move beyond land and build floating solar farms? And start looking to the skies. We will be ending this video with solar balloon towers and how solar panels will be fused with Tesla's Cybertruck. And what other ways will solar panels and solar power be used to build a more technologically advanced world? Since the amount of energy that the sun strikes the earth in one hour is enough to power all of humankind's needs for a whole year. Will there be a day when our city and town streets are lined with solar trees mixed with natural ones? Cities from Singapore to Marrakesh already have these futuristic solar trees. Merging solar panels with a tree structure allows for more solar panels to be used without taking up more floor space on the ground, as the structures reach up and branch out. They also provide shade for hot city streets or even parking lots. And depending on the design of the solar trees, they can also give an area a more sci-fi-like and futuristic landscape, even lighting up at night. There are a number of companies that work on building solar trees, such as Spotlight Solar, Envision Solar, Smart Palm, Artemide Outdoor, and Smart Flower. You can see the solar trees being used in different places around the world. In Florida, solar trees have been popping up in zoos, near museums, airports, and parks. India has created the world's largest solar tree with 35 panels at the CISR CMERI residential colony in Durgapur. And then there is Singapore, who has created a skyline that looks like a Photoshop concept image. But these are real solar trees. There are 18 super trees that collect rainwater and work as cooling ducts, and 11 of them have solar panels, which powers water pumps and powers the super trees when they light up at night. The super trees also draw in air, sending it upwards, creating a breeze at ground level. Visitors are able to walk up among the trees along the skywalks that connect them. All of this is part of Singapore's goal of creating a city inside of a garden. What happens when you start mixing robotics with solar panels and make them smart machines that start thinking for themselves? 
The reason for adding robotic elements to a solar panel is as the sun moves during the day and even the year, you want the solar panels to move too, just the way sunflowers do as they turn to follow the sun's rays. When mixing robotics with solar panels, there is the Smart Flower all-in-one solar power system. It uses robotics and motors to fold out and follow the sun's path. Doing this can generate up to 40% more solar power than a solar panel that sits still. And at the end of the day, it will fold up and clean itself for the night, ready for the next day. People can even build their own DIY solar trackers at home using motors and a 3D printer, as seen by this open source project by the Open Source Classroom. Cubotics was a company that created Solbots. Instead of having expensive individual motors for each solar panel stand, an inexpensive railing was used to connect them all. Two robots worked together, driving to each solar panel stand to rotate them to face the sun. While one robot made the rounds, the other would be charging. And what about adding drones into the mix? How can they, along with artificial intelligence, add to the solar movement? Drones are used to map out plots of land and calculate the sun's exposure at different times of the day and year. This lets landowners figure out where is the best place to install the solar panels. And drones, along with artificial intelligence, are also able to fly over large solar farms inspecting solar panels for damaged areas that need repairing. There will be more later in the video on how drones fitted with solar panels can stay flying for months and what they are used for. As drones survey plots of land for the best place to put solar panels, other people and companies are choosing to build on water, creating floating solar farms. One reason for building on water is because there is more space available to build, and another big benefit is that the water keeps the solar panels cooler, making them more efficient. There is the Sekdorn floating solar farm built on a lake in the Netherlands that was switched on in 2019, and it only took six weeks to build. Ocean Sun have been building floating solar farms too. Prototypes have been built on the west coast of Norway, in Singapore, and the Philippines, and they are building full projects in Albania and South Korea. In the western Indian village of Gujarat, a solar power farm has been built on land but spreads across and covers a canal river. Not only does the canal water help keep the solar panels cool, making them up to 5% more efficient, but the shade from the solar panels helps stop the water below from evaporating, saving the water for crops and people. The shade also helps keep the water cleaner as it slows down the growth of algae. The project in India is called the Canals Solar Power Project and covers 750 meters of canal waters in Gujarat. And more states in India have been commissioning builds for solar canal farms. The idea of using solar panels to create protective shade can also be used on land. Agrivoltaics is a way of farming that uses solar panels on farmland while allowing food to grow under them in the shade. Because the crops are growing in the shade, when watering the crops, the water stays on the soil longer and does not evaporate as fast. This saves water as farmers are faced with climate change affecting water supplies and crop growth. Another benefit of growing food crops under shade is that the leaves grow larger as they try to capture as much sunlight as possible. This means you end up with larger leafy food crops ready for eating. The solar panels also provide farmers with a different income source as they sell the energy back to the grid. So far, we have covered using solar panels on land and water, but what about up in the air? Lightweight autonomous drones fitted with solar panels are flying in the skies for months at a time. Some are being worked on so that they can fly up to a year. These are being built to provide internet for undeveloped areas as well as communications, and they can be used for imaging and monitoring areas, for example when natural disasters happen and for tracking wildfires. Google had a project where they were developing drones to provide internet for rural areas, but they ended up moving onto large balloons instead. Google's balloon project is called Loon, and they use balloons that are as big as a tennis court. These balloons use solar panels to power the equipment that beams down the internet network and keeps the balloons in the right place up in the air. There are also balloon projects being developed to generate solar power. The Sun Hope Project is a project started by Joseph Corey and Dr. Pini Gerfel, an architect and an aerospace engineer. The balloons are filled with helium and are made from a solar integrated fabric. The balloons attach to a power cable, a control panel, and a helium supply cable. 
This balloon system makes use of vertical space, effectively building in 3D rather than on a 2D plane like normal solar farms. And having balloons that can fly above the clouds allows for uninterrupted solar power. NASA is also looking into using solar balloons, but for the exploration of Mars or even Jupiter and Saturn. When it comes to our homes, the most common place to put solar panels is on the roof. But companies such as Ubiquitous are working on making solar windows possible. They will act just like a normal window, letting you see out, while adding more areas where solar power can be captured. They could also be used as skylights in the roof or as greenhouses in the backyard. Not only will houses be able to use them, but also buildings and cities. But where else could these transparent solar panels be fitted? Car windows would be the other use, or even for mobile phone screens. The idea of making solar panels invisible in windows can also be used for other materials. An Italian company called D'Aqua uses recyclable materials to create realistic-looking tiles just like Tesla's roof tiles. But D'Aqua are also creating realistic-looking stone, wood, and concrete, which means that they don't just have to go on the roof, they can also be used to cover walls. This allows solar panels to be used with heritage buildings and landscapes, keeping the historical look of a place, since you can avoid using the traditional black rectangle solar panels that are usually put on roofs. These Diaqua invisible solar panels could even be used to make sidewalks or cobbled streets. When it comes to our roads, we can see solar panels being used on cars, as barriers, or even used to make the roads themselves. Elon Musk's Cybertruck can be used in remote locations because of its off-roading capabilities, and adding solar panels to it will allow it to go completely off the grid. Adding solar panels onto the back of the Cybertruck would add 15 miles of range per day. While, as Elon has said, adding fold-out, deployable solar wings could add 30 to 40 miles per day. Could this be an Elon Musk side project for developing human transportation vehicles to be used on Mars? When it comes to the streets on Earth, solar panels are being put up as sound barriers in high traffic areas. These types of sound barriers are mostly seen in Europe in countries such as Switzerland, Germany, and Holland. And lastly, there is Solar Roadways, a company who creates specially engineered solar panels that can be walked and driven on. These are smart panels too, as they have microprocessors in them that light up LED lights that act as road markings and can heat up the roads to melt snow and ice, adding to the number of ways that solar panels and solar power will transform our lives in the future, creating a more solar punk world. On the next episode of Venture City, we take a look at Elon Musk and his thoughts on artificial intelligence, and the video will also explain the basics of AI. Hit the thumbs up and subscribe buttons to not miss a video. Solar Punk is a sci fi. Hello? Uh, we'll back again, 10.30. Yes, sir. Can, okay, we'll back again, 10.30. Okay, Thank sir. You. Thank you. See you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, my friend. Yes, Kingsley. How are you? How are you? Yeah, doing great. Oh, the good presentation. Sorry, sir. So that was an excellent presentation. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> and how about you? How is in your country condition? We're doing well. Doing well. Oh, Just yes. uh, very early morning, right? Very early, early morning. For <laughs> sorry, sorry for that, my friend. No, it's okay. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome to you again. Uh, <clears throat> now we'll discuss about the global scenario uh, of uh, solar photovoltaic energy. And uh, we can see this is the scenario of Europe, uh, global scenario of Europe. They already took many initiative and they took the policy and they took initiative for 
uh, for sustainable development and they concern to fully concern about increase increase uh, increase uh, the, uh, the green environment and uh, reduce the CO2. So we can see that the, this is the solar photovoltaic energy. They use also the marine energy. Uh, if we look at uh, Finland uh, or um, Finland, uh, Germany, they, they concern about the solar and uh, they produce a huge, um, huge uh, solar, solar panel and uh, also the european countries based on especially european countries they focus uh, on renewable energy they already took many initiative for that and they already promote it and uh, at the same time also um, like uh, canada they 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 took initiative they focus on for uh, to they try to develop uh, the um, renewable energy like as a solar energy they promote solar energy and usa also now promoting the solar energy they invest huge amount of uh, budget for uh, develop the solar solar research uh, mit and uh, MIT and uh, Harvard, they try to develop, and also in England, uh, Oxford, they try to develop the solar technology. So European country and uh, also the American, they, they, they try to develop their solar, um, solar energy, uh, energy technology. At the same time, they try other renewable energy also. If we look uh, to um, Europe, uh, like uh, Finland, Germany, France, uh, Italy, and uh, Spain, uh, we can see that uh, they they are, uh, they are producing energy from uh, taking an, uh, energy from uh, solar photovoltaic, and uh, due to the um, due to the COVID issue. Currently, we know that uh, our environment a little bit stable. So this is the great opportunity to switch uh, renewable energy because uh, now we, we, we have the energy demand. If we compare with before COVID and now, it's a huge, uh, huge uh, difference. And we know from uh, the newspaper or uh, research reported that uh, environment now back again like a previous time going to back. But uh, if we do, we will not take the initiative and uh, it would be same again and will uh, destroy our environment <clears throat> this is the scenario um, 2020 is I uh, international renewable energy uh, authority they reported that uh, the condition of you see we is a rapidly increased but uh, if we look after 2011 and it's a huge increase and then fall down 2040 and again to from 2016 to increase and uh, after 2018 it dramatically increased so this is the condition of uh, current situ current situation and a scenario of Thailand. Thailand also they they took many initiative, and we can see that uh, Thailand solar um, uh, solar uh, gen electricity generation is almost three, uh, thirty more than three thousand uh, megawatt, and uh, they try to uh, promote it. And and uh, the current situation also we can see from here. Uh, the Thailand, they produce in 2015, they produce, um, they generate ele uh, they took electricity from uh, solar 12,000, uh, 12, uh, 12, uh, 1,298 uh, megawatt. And uh, the target by, by end of the 2036, it would be 6,000 megawatt. And if we compare with other they also promote other uh, uh, renewable energy, other renewable energy, but uh, they, they they only try to focus on uh, solar energy, and it already all, almost dramatically increased. We can see that uh, Thailand uh, already uh, took initiative, and uh, this is the scenario of, uh, currently. And from uh, 2007 to we can see how switch uh, the energy uh, scenario of Thailand. And uh, this is the, the, the it's reported uh, from uh, some researcher. They reported that. And what is the plan policy for Thailand? 
Thailand, they took initiative like uh, installation of solar uh, rooftop system, one million household. So that can back up uh, for household. They can to, um, they can use their own electricity, and that can help also to promote the green. And government has subsidy for that. And also um, the Thailand hospital. They are using currently government promote that, and uh, they they try to um, use uh, the solar solar energy, and uh, e get supported and. Uh, this is the also the in future the school and university also cover uh, the solar energy. So in future prospect, actually, um, our now um, uh, uh, many organization, our leaders, they took initiative to reduce uh, the temperature at least one point five degree centigrade um, by end of 2050 to uh, try to drop up and uh, reduce the CO2 emission. And uh, they, they, they took many initiative and many countries, they already and developing countries such as uh, um, Thailand, Malaysia, they, to, they try to promote the renewable energy, Filipino, and some African country also, they try to promote uh, the renewable energy. Um, so uh, if we work together and collaborate each other and uh, it possible uh, to reduce uh, and from the CO2 and uh, pro um, stop the climate change. So in future from solar energy, we can, uh, we can see that uh, the, the maximum, uh, we can uh, do 25% more than, and uh, it can uh, help also the uh, total install maybe um, we, we predict that 8,519 uh, 8, uh, gigawatt and uh, it can help also our economy, it can help our uh, support our electricity generation, uh, people can um, get uh, employment, uh, that, this is the huge, uh, huge uh, industry we can uh, um, we can see that uh, from a solar photovoltaic energy and it's free it's free and in, uh, also the cheap cost if we compare with other tech, uh, other renewable energy technology so this is uh, my uh, collaboration uh, this is my work uh, i'm working on paruskai solar cell uh, in malaysia ukm uh, and during my previous time I uh, did uh, before COVID, I, uh, from, uh, our some con uh, collaboration work, we fabricate the solar energy. He's my professor, Norshad Amin, uh, solar expert uh, in Malaysia. And uh, we try to improve the efficiency and we got 11% um, uh, efficiency of uh, Paru Sky solar cell, but due to the, due to the materials issue, so, and also uh, after COVID uh, and COVID came and then we stopped our working. And this is my uh, research, our research uh, work, collaboration work and our own work. Uh, we published uh, international journal, uh, many articles. Uh, I just highlighted the three of them and uh, that can, um, uh, we, we, we try to contribute, uh, to not only uh, think about that, we try to contribute our for future sustainable development and uh, we try to implement the solar energy. This is my, uh, co our collaboration, international collaboration. We work uh, with uh, that kind of organization and we have collaboration. We try to promote uh, renewable energy and also develop the technology. So, uh, now it's time to the group discussion. I would like to invite all of you uh, to discuss about your, what is the situation in your country and what do you think and how can we promote it and uh, one by one. I would like to invite uh, Michelle first, Mr. Michelle. This is Michelle or Michael, sir? Oh, Michelle. Oh, sorry, Michael. Sorry for my mistake. Uh, no problem. No problem. I, I, I know what's going on. All right. Um, good night. Um, good night, everybody. Um, 
a guy from Guyana, so to America, I think I introduced myself before, but I, I'm gonna do it to you for you, sir. Um, we, we have started using solar PV um, energy. We tried not, it's not a large scale, it's from a very uh, small Sorry, small. sorry, sir, uh, before I'm interrupting, uh, can you introduce yourself first? Because I don't know about your uh, background. Uh, and then a little bit, just 30 seconds, no problem. Please, sir. Hello, Mr. Michael. Can you hear me, sir? Can you hear me, sir? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Just introduce a little <laughs> bit uh, your, about your profession and then, yeah. Okay, my name is Michael Belber. I'm from Guyana, South America. I work with the Ministry of Natural Resources as a compliance and law enforcement officer. So I am um, here, here representing the Ministry of Natural Resources. Being a part of this program. My, my job basically is to ensure that compliance in the natural resources sector, that is um, in terms of our, our gold, bauxite, diamond, oil, forestry, wildlife, protected area. All right, so when it comes to um, solar, solar energy, Solar energy in my country is not such a big thing. I don't think it's promoted the way it should be promoted and how it should be promoted in terms of its magnitude because of the importance of not just the solar energy, um, stop renewable energy, but we have some form where we can utilize solar energy in some of our public buildings, but it's just a small percentage of the energy. I think. Majority of our energy is used by um, fossil fuel, from fossil fuel, and um, like for me, I see solar energy something that we need to or put energy in general. That's going to use solar energy. Sir, Michael, uh, uh, Mr. Harmain, can I please unmute your microphone? Then it may not interrupt. Uh, yeah, please unmute your microphone. Oh, sorry, mute your microphone. Okay, okay, continue, sir. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've I, seen I, the, the increasing need for renewable energy in the country. country. And like these, like this, this presentation, presentation, this thing is going to be an open a, a gate for discussion in terms of getting towards more renewable and clean energy in the future for my country. I'm hoping that whatever discussion here, here can take back to the policy takers and convince them on hard on uh, renewable energy because we are stepping, but we're stepping a bit slow. My country. If you look, you won't see more much more. Michael, excuse me. I am right there. I am right there. There's there's echo in your. In your audio, your audio, maybe you can, maybe turn, you can turn on the other devices that is turned on, on right now. Right now, we can't clearly we can hear, hear your voice. voice. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Mr. Mark. Uh, Michael, please continue and uh, turn off you to another device if you have. Please. Uh, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you, but uh, some, I have, I have, I have, some noise. I'm hearing an echo, but I have what I saw. Sometimes your voice is not clear. But can you hear me clear now? Yeah, we, we can hear you, but some background noise uh, sometimes is interrupt and we cannot hear sometimes clearly, sometimes it's okay. All right. Um, I'm not sure exactly what is going on because I don't have any other devices on. Okay. Okay. I, I got your point, uh, Michael. Uh, that is that uh, your your country based on actually fossil fuel, but uh, still now you uh, you may not uh, took a big initiative for renewable energy or maybe you are not focusing on renewable energy. So in your country, do uh, have any uh, like uh, hydropower or others which which renewable energy now you are uh, focusing on that well um we had 
we started the hydro power plant. They had some work done at that, and for some reason that, that, that project was out. I am not sure what was the reasoning behind that. So that was a way for us switching into renewable energy. But that project is on hold right now. The, the project of renewable energy that is actually working, um, we utilize small amounts of solar panel or the solar PV system energy. Yeah. So uh, yeah, maybe uh, after end of the session, we may get some idea how can promote in your country because of here we join actually exchange the knowledge. We are from different countries. So we, we, we will share first, we will share our experience, our country condition, and then we try to make a solution and uh, try to find out some policy because uh, maximum person I can see that you are the policy maker for uh, your country or you are a supporter for making a policy in your country. So if you, because of, you are not, uh, I'm not sure, maximum maybe are not from material science. For me, I'm working for develop the technology, but, uh, and we can, it's not possible for me. I, I cannot promote uh, the solar energy. I can develop the technology, but I need your support also. Because of the policy maker, they can promote and they make a policy to promote the renewable energy. So uh, due to the actually sound issue, maybe I can call someone and uh, other, um, I, I can call someone and uh, later on I'll call you again. Thank you, Michel, uh, Michael. No problem. No problem. Sir. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mark. Marks. Yes, sir. I'm here. Yeah, Mr. Mars, please uh, just a little bit introduce yourself uh, within 30 seconds and then uh, you can continue, you can share with us uh, your country condition, how about renewable energy or solar energy in your country. Okay, uh, good afternoon everyone for people here in this part of Asia. Uh, my name is Mark Kachin. I am from the Polong City, Zamboanga del Norte, in the Mindanao, Mindanao Island of the Philippines. I currently uh, am working in the Department of Science and Technology, mainly focusing on uh, giving assistance to our medium enterprises. Uh, new technologies to improve uh, their production efficiency, product development, uh, process improvement, manpower development, and so on. Uh, right now, sir, I uh, cannot uh, give you a, a specific uh, outlook on the uh, uh, renewable energy trend. Because I have yet to uh, do some research in this one, as I have to, I am scheduled to report on. Uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Michael, uh, you, you March, uh, you have also same problem. I don't know why. Maybe can you? Uh, I I couldn't hear clearly before that. Can you explain it again? Okay, I'm I'm gonna check my other devices. That's nice. Right. I suppose all of us are having some echo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have no device, other device on right now. Okay. Having multiple devices turned on right now. I think, sir, I think, sir the problem is at your end. Because all of us are experiencing some echo. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, pick up. Pick sound problem. Like, cannot hear clearly. It's like, uh, Mars, can you talk again? Sound problem. Hello, check. Is that good? Yeah, now we can. Uh -huh. Sound, sound, sound. So, uh, so. You speak? No, no, they when they speak, it's like noise, noise. Hmm. 
Hello, sir. Uh, is this audio now? Uh... Mm -mm. Okay, 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 okay. Are there no more echoing sounds? Uh, now, uh, now a little bit. Okay, okay. You, you can, you can continue. Okay. Uh, Mark, oh, we cannot hear you. Hello, yeah. I was muted. Okay. I, I believe, sir. Also, if uh, I speak. Be very understandable for all Okay, uh, I will start from the beginning, right? Okay, okay, uh, okay. Good morning, everyone. Good noon to all the participants who comes from this part of Asia. My name is Mark Kachin. I work for the Department of Science and Technology, uh, mainly uh, focusing on uh, improving micro, small, and medium enterprises uh, in terms of their process improvement, uh, equipment acquisition, uh, manpower development, and so on to improve their productivity, uh, create new products, uh, and, and gain, and gain uh, income to provide employment to, to the community. Uh, sir, I am scheduled to give my country report on July 20, and right now I cannot give you a specific uh, data on the renewable energy uh, consumption or, or, or whatever data that, that is needed to present right now because I haven't done my research yet, but I assure you that on my scheduled uh, country report on July 20, I will give you a comprehensive report on, on a renewable energy consumption policies and, and trends here in, in this part of the Philippines. Yeah, yeah, th th thank you. Actually, not uh, like a country report, it's like, a, what is the scenario? In it? It's not, a, it should not be like a, uh, exact amount or exact thing um, in your country available hydro or solar i want to know uh, something like that it's not a oh, okay. yeah yeah okay okay i thought it was i was going to give the country report uh, yeah. right now in this part of the philippines we are in the mindanao area the southern part of the philippines uh, our current energy is coming from coal. Majority of it comes from coal, but I know that there is um, a percentage of it comes from hydro hydropower. And more and more households, uh, including those uh, area where there is uh, not electric connections, people tend to adopt solar energy as their main source of, of electricity. And there is, I think, in our area here, in our province, in Zamboanga del Norte, I think there are three firms or three, three businesses that offers solar, solar panels and solar power installation. So that is uh, the situation here in my part of, in this part of the country. And, I, I hope to bring a more and more renewable energy power to sustain growth, no? not only in, in, in the rural areas, but also in the urban areas where shortage of electricity is very common. No? In, in a month, maybe there will be uh, blackouts for one to two days, uh, averaging from 30 minutes to two hours. And I think solar energy or other uh, renewable source of energy can, can greatly uh, positively impact the, the, the energy demand, the energy demand of, of this area. So I believe that after this course, uh, we will have, or I will have enough knowledge to be able to 
create create awareness to to the people of to the people in my place, especially the policymakers, the businessmen, uh, and other stakeholders, that the key to to growth economically in the future is to adopt renewable source of energy. It will be costly. It will be what do you call this? It will be a challenge, but I know with this uh, improvement in the technology, you mentioned earlier, sir, about the uh, second generation solar panels. I believe that this will be a very, a very welcoming development for places like mine, a developing, a developing country, a developing nation to adopt renewable source of energy. Thank you. Thank you, Mark, for your wonderful explanation and your thinking. Yeah, you, you are right. And I believe that you will promote in your country. Here we join actually to share our knowledge. So I believe you also may have also some idea end of the station and we'll uh, make, we try to make uh, something how can develop or how can promote or how can uh, we will discuss later the, about the policy. So now I would like to invite Emma, Mr. or Miss, I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, sorry for that, Emma. Emma, can you hear me? Okay. And uh, Miss Arlin, Miss Arlin, can you hear me? Uh, sorry, I, I, are you speaking? Okay. I, are you okay. trying to look for AMA or yeah, AMA? AMA, AMA. Thank you. Thank yeah. you, sir. So, sorry for, yes, sorry yeah. for that. Uh, say, I'm still, uh, yeah, good morning. Uh, do I need to turn on my, yeah, sorry, so that they continue. Uh, uh, could you explain something? Yeah, thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you. Uh, sorry. Um, currently, I am, I'm also from Philippines. Um, we, um, I just, I just want to add to some, uh, uh, do you still want to give me some info about the Philippines status on the solar energy? Uh, because um, but uh, yeah um, currently i have i am i have here uh, the, the data for the uh, I, sorry i cannot share <laughs> i am I'm, i was still looking for the for the soft copy i have some difficulty anyway uh, we have here the data for the power generation by source in gigawatt hour totally in the philippines Currently, we have a total of 101,750. Uh, sorry for interrupt. Uh, um, before you go to Emma, um, could you tell me your profession? I, uh, because this is a sorry. Tough time. Sorry yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, uh, I am Amante Ama. I am I'm already a graduate of uh, uh, Doctor of Philosophy in Physics. Uh, yeah, I'm a physicist, but I am especially specializing on photonics. But I am also doing some experimentations in doing uh, renewable energy resources. Uh, yeah, also the photovoltaic cell. Uh, I, I am currently developing some uh, organic solar cells um, uh, crudely because we are just have, we don't have that those kind of love in your place. Uh, we are trying to use uh, different dyes, local dyes in the Philippines, and we are trying also to use some polymer to maximize the efficiency of the pot of the uh, dye sensitized solar cell and yeah, other possible. Yeah, yeah. Have you, is that very clear? Yeah, 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 yeah. Clear. Okay. Okay. So, um, so as I have mentioned earlier, the total power generation by source in the Philippines is 101,756 uh, gigawatt hour. So energy. So currently, this is the data for 2020, although I have a lot of data here from 2003. So this is the last year data. So the, the, uh, how about the solar energy? We have currently 1,373 gigawatt hour. So that it is about 1.35% 1, 1. generation 
uh, I mean, to uh, in relation to the total generation. So, so currently we are already investing in solar cells or solar energy, and in our local in region in our region, uh, we are already building some solar uh, power plants uh, uh, using solar cells or yeah solar panels. And we are also exploring um, uh, energy by solar cell by installing that in our buildings uh, using this uh, called uh, green uh, green technology. So some of our we are already starting to build buildings with solar cell. So that is currently the status in our place. But uh, we still have a long way to go to at least uh, have more solar power plants. That's all. Thank you. Do you, have, do you have any plan for working on uh, Parasky Solar Cell? Uh, yes, of course. Yeah, because oh, you are yeah. working on, on organic, and can you could you share some experience about that? Uh, organic solar cell. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, uh, in our in, in our previous experiments, we are just using the usual crude. Uh, uh, creation of the PN junction. So we use the titanium dioxide as our substrate for the dye, you know that. And uh, of course we just use the usual carbon coating uh, to, uh, to candlestick thing in our first experimentation. But now we are doing some, we are trying to uh, embed the carbon in our ITO, indium tin, okay, because you know, uh, our glass, uh, conductive glass light is ITO coated uh, glass lights. We imported that from, from Singapore and of course from China <laughs> in our earlier. Um, uh, our new new thing here, our I mean the improvement now uh, in our experimentations, rather than uh, coating the, uh, we use spin coating on the, uh, we try to use the process is spin coating for the titanium dioxide in the glass lights. And mm -hmm. rather than using the useful carbon uh, uh, in, uh, deposition to the, to the glass lights or the conductive glass lights, we are now using a uh, laser lithography uh, so that we can put this carbon. And we, uh, we have also a local polymer here that is uh, because you know the polymer now is also a very promising material for high uh, high storage of uh, energy, say for instance in the batteries. So we are also exploring that if we can have a much more uh, faster electron transfer, uh, so that we could have also a high efficiency for uh, our organic solar cells. Uh, I suppose that's all. And <laughs> currently, we are not yet done for our new. We don't have yet data for our new explorations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because of uh, that, that's why we 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 are in now uh, one flight from Taika Airlines for that. You see, due to the uh, limitation of a lab uh, facility, you you cannot explore your knowledge, but you have the idea. So how yeah. could you ex explore your idea? So uh, how could you develop your idea? So if you have the good connection with a uh, good laboratory, so you may have uh, some working facility because now for sustainable development, we collaborate each other. For me, like uh, I, um, I, I, I try to develop my, 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 during my master's, I try to develop uh, my uh, perovskite solar cell efficiency development. So. Uh, I have some lab uh, lackings of lab facilities in Thailand, so I collaborate with the University of Malaya and uh, University UK uh, University Kavangsan Malaysia. So my professor is the uh, top uh, three prof uh, listed in Malaysia, Professor Norshadam, based on solar cell. So I work with them and I I did some yeah according to that I can I, I could publish some. Uh, uh, publication, international publication. So that's why. So I believe that you will find uh, also some collaboration in this platform and you can explore your knowledge and you can develop your uh, idea also. Yeah. Thank and you for so, that. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I will come, uh, come again because of uh, this is the 
some of us we are thinking about technology but we need to implement because one person cannot establish the method we need to cover social responsibility we need a policy maker we need investor and technology development all in one platform then we can establish or we can promote one thing so here is that we are many people and we are from different backgrounds so we may uh, develop we have the opportunity to develop uh, the policy right so yeah we'll discuss it later so now i would like to invite kia kia if i don't make mistake sorry for that if i make mistake can you hear me Kia. Okay, okay, I, I can invite another person. I will call you later. Uh, so our solar man, Har, Mr. Har May One, Har May One. Mr. Har May One. Can you, sir, unmute yourself? Mr. Hermione, can you hear me? Do you mean Pepiansha? Hello? Do you mean Pepiansha? So, sorry? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hermione mm -hmm. Pepiansha? Pepiansha? Okay. okay, okay. Pepiansha, right? Hello? Yeah, hello. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please. Thank you, sir. Uh, please uh, some discuss with us uh, some of your knowledge or how about in your country about the solar photovoltaic. Share with us. First, uh, introduce a little bit about your profession and then start. OK, thank you. Uh, thank you for your uh, invitation to sharing from my country. Uh, I'm Herman Fabianza. Uh, I'm a researcher from National Sanitation Agency of Indonesia. Uh, now, because in the pandemic, uh, now I'm in home, I'm work from home. So, sorry, my uniform is not properly. Uh, this, this is now, yeah. now come on, come on, because uh, we have to ready anytime. So, this is our now professional dress, no problem. <laughs> okay, okay, sorry. Uh, uh, I would like to share uh, the con my country up for maybe I would like to share from my energy country report uh, as data I obtained but, from. Uh, sorry, it's not country report. I want to know about uh, uh, current situation of uh, solar photovoltaic. And do you have any like uh, idea or you can share something about you? Because country report is later, uh, so you just uh, share about the solar photovoltaic and what do you okay. think? Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, because I work uh, in National Station Agency uh, now, uh, we concern in standard for solar PV. Uh, as you know, maybe uh, uh, for standard for. Uh, PV module has been standardized in Indonesia. Uh, so uh, it's, uh, it's PV modules used in Indonesia must be uh, comply with standards. Uh, now, uh, the development of uh, solar PV in Indonesia uh, uh, concerning to building the industry because uh, we have a projection uh, for Indonesia in solar PV. Uh, we'll uh, continue to increase maybe uh, to target of uh, Indonesia renewable energy in 2025 uh, for 23% from renewable energy in Indonesia energy mix. So uh, 
we have we have concern to standardize and industrialize uh, solar PV, and we have a program as you present before about a rooftop. Uh, we 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 will uh, campaign to public uh, about uh, PV rooftop installation, uh, and we have a regulation to give a uh, like at, uh, we call it prosumer. So uh, the the public uh, can uh, sell the electricity from the uh, PV rooftop. I think uh, now. Uh, the development progress uh, for solar PV in Indonesia is about to campaign. It's about to campaign how can people aware to use solar PV in home because uh, now uh, uh, Indonesia uh, is uh, is try to release the impedance from uh, release from. Uh, Sorry, we avoid from fossil energy. Uh, so, uh, as you know, Indonesia now uh, use about uh, more or half for fossil energy. So, we try to decrease uh, fossil energy to to transition to renewable energy. So, we concern in uh, solar PV, uh, especially in rooftop. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for your wonderful presentation. It's like, you know, I can see the future leader of Indonesia. It's not like uh, you are the leader for, you will lead the energy sector and you will promote your energy because we know that Indonesia, every year they, they, they feel a natural digester, right? A tsunami or something like that. So yeah, that, so so you see we we try to developing our technology at the same time some of country because those are near the sea they they, they are sufferer so at the same also japan also they like like of you they, they are also suffer many things but uh, this is the way to develop our uh, solar photovoltaic energy because it's a uh, cost uh, it's not um, cost too, not too much high and we can replace it easily and also the lifetime also almost 20 to 25 years so that can that is the big achievement and uh, you know uh, theoretically now efficiency uh, almost more than 40 or 50 but uh, we try to develop because of due to the material issue researchers they are trying to develop the materials uh, um, uh, develop the material and synthesis because uh, that's why still now we are in 20 maybe in future you see we are now we we try to do the relax just don't want to do hard work like uh, our device also would be like in future lack of electricity but they will give us more product um, uh, product uh, efficiency efficiency for example uh, just last year maybe Apple, they announced their first announce uh, M1 chip. So if we compare with other Intel um, Intel laptop or computer, it's like uh, Intel, Apple laptop, Apple Mac Pro, uh, the uh, Intel one 16 GB RAM and that one only 8 GB RAM, but comp work ability is same, you see? So we are, we are going to actually that generation and maybe in future we can we can't think anything about without solar will will utilize it thank you so much sir and now i would like to invite miss arlene hello hello sir, hello, sir. yeah miss afternoon arlene. here from the philippines Wow, <laughs> many Filipinos. <laughs> there are a lot of Filipino uh, participants in this uh, seminar. Um, just a short introduction about me. I am a teacher for college students here in the Philippines. I teach in uh, Bicol State College of Applied Sciences and Technology, and I am handling science subjects. Um, um, well, I train future educators, and I believe that 
my role as a teacher, training teachers, is also important uh, on how we educate them about the concepts on global warming and environmental issues. Um, for the um, situation of um, in our country about power supply, um, I think it was already discussed a while ago by, by my colleagues, um, but um, majority of our power supply are really coming from coal. You know, 40% of our consumption are coming from coal or fossil fuels. Um, but I am happy to, to say that um, there are uh, a bigger number of Filipinas now who are becoming more aware of investing on um, renewable energy resources. Um, just to share, um, in our barangay, um, it, it, it's, a, it's a, a small community. There is already um, a, a project. Um, they are about to build a solar farm in our nearby barangay. And I think that is, that is a, um, a one uh, important uh, kumbaga, uh, project um, that to build up another source of um, renewable energy in our area. Now, the, the, only, the only problem is that I think um, the resources will still be um, not to be consumed by the immediate community because um, we have a problem with um, the energy distribution. Um, in our area, um, there was this monopoly of power when it comes to, to energy uh, distribution. Um, the distribution were, were provided by selected companies, private companies. And because of that, the, the price of power supply in our area is very high. And we are also experiencing a um, series of blackouts in our area. So that's, that's the situation in our area, sir. Thank you, Teacher Arlene. Teacher Arlene, you know, what is your contribution? You are working uh, from base, like uh, how to develop the base because you work on awareness, you know? If we, uh, we are producing lots of renewable energy, okay, 100% from renewable energy, but people don't aware about that. They just wasted of electricity. That also, so you are working to, uh, you may, help them to think people think them and uh, your society to teach them uh, how they save their energy they don't waste energy this is not the solution this is not a solution like uh, we produce electricity from solar photovoltaic at the same time we have to think also in future we every every when we are going to do anything we have to think first awareness is the best policy because we need to aware uh, wasted of electricity. For example, someone may be in the office, uh, out of office, but uh, air con or light on. So this wasted, right? So huge yes. wasted also. So we need to awareness also, you see? So that is your main contribution. You can, uh, you can help your students <laughs> to develop their uh, psychology and develop their positive mentality, how can they become a great person? Thank you so much, Arlie. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. And uh, now I would like to invite Birendra, Mr. Birendra. Mr. Birendra. Uh, hello. Hello, sir. Mr. Birendra. Okay, sorry. I I came here to only listen. I uh, I did not prepare any materials. Oh, okay, okay, sir. No, no need to uh, prepare any material. That just share your experience about the solar energy in your country, or what do you think, and how can you contribute, or what? Uh, just uh, it's not. It's, it's just discussion. We will. And then, okay, later then I will talk. Okay, okay, sir. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Okay, may I invite uh, Kaya? Kaya. Kaya Finido. Uh, 
Okay, uh, sir, uh, we may go for another break and you may prepare your uh, um, your in your country situation and then we can uh, discuss about that issue. Are you okay, all of you? Hello. Yes, yes, I can hear you. Please, please share your... Uh, okay, sir. Uh, I am Julie, uh, coming from the Philippines. So I am... I am a researcher also and a professor in a state university teaching a science subject, no? Yes, sir. So, I would like to share my, my, my updates actually in our country about, about the solar panel. So, the solar panel market in the Philippines has been growing exponentially, no? Since 2018, uh, in fact, the Philippines Board of Investments had provided eight solar projects that year. So the Solar Philippines Commercial Rooftop Projects Incorporated oversaw all eight that were equally equivalent to $1.65 billion of investment. So even though, as of today, the solar power industry is still on the emerging stage in the country. It is expected to gain massive support from the government moving forward. So some of the factors that will drive growth in the solar energy sector are the growing population in the country as well as the Philippines' rapid economic growth. So when the Philippines succeeds, in replacing diesel generators in most islands because Philippines is an archipelago with solar energy, there will be a significant reduction in power uh, out outages in the country. So solar energy and other renewable energy sources will guarantee grid stability throughout the Philippines. So I am pointing here for main trains in solar energy in the Philippines. So, number one, the accessibility for private households in the country. So, uh, in a couple of years, uh, utility scale of solar was difficult to achieve due to the market's regulatory uh, changes in the country. So, the price competition was too high and only the largest capitalized developers could compete. No? So that's the first uh, trend. So the second one, the significant growth of solar VB or the photovoltaic cell. Uh, when we see photovoltaic cell, this is the semiconductor device that converts the light into electrical energy. So the production cost of solar energy uh, is expected to fall significantly uh, between uh, 2020 and 2025. I am talking here the the five years, no five years uh, uh, gap, no or five years. So as a result, the projected result, the solar will take first place for the cheapest source of energy in the Philippines. So the growth of photovoltaic systems in the Philippines will will, I'm sure, provide an immediate and more permanent solution uh, to the country's energy needs. Because as of now, uh, we have we have many cut outs no, uh, in electricity because of the short uh, supply coming from the power plant. So the market is already registering a significant fall in the cost of photovoltaic cells. And many households are jumping on this bandwagon and taking advantage of the affordability of solar uh, equipment here in the country. And the third trend is the increased grid parity. So when we see grid parity, uh, this is the point when the cost of the alternative energy becomes equal, equal to or from conventional energy forms like the fossil fuels, no? Because in the Philippines, uh, we have used population increase uh, and without alternative source of energy, the grid easily gets unstable. However, 
due to the introduction of renewable sources of energy like the solar and wind because we have this already in the country we have we have wind energy uh, in Luzon and somewhere in Visayas no so we can see a future where grid parity is guaranteed and the last one trend is the, the storage no so there are plans underway to develop solar storage uh, microgrids in the Philippines. So when this plan succeeds, so solar energy will play a huge role in improving environmental health, human health, as well as people's quality of life. So this will be a huge step towards achieving Philippines national climate change. Uh, because now we are also affected with the climate change. Greenhouse gas emissions reduction and renewable energy goals. So solar energy production uh, allows the Philippines to reduce its regions on fuel, the transition to low carbon energy sources like wind and solar opens up economic development opportunities from a climate perspective. So in general, harnessing solar energy uh, has ensured that many households in the Philippines can make it through hot and humid days. So solar air conditioners allow homeowners to achieve a comfortable indoor environment without digging too deep into their pockets. So these latest trends uh, show that things are only getting better. So we can see a future where solar energy is the main source of electricity in the Philippines. Okay, uh, that's all, sir, that I can share with you uh, here in our country. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you, sir, Julie. Uh, yeah, this is the this is the true and uh, this is the real scenario. Not only Filipino over uh, over the world actually. So we may um, some of company they can uh, they can because of actually installment uh, install of a solar photovoltaic is expensive. But uh, if we think twenty years serving twenty years. So one after one or two years, it uh, like as a free electricity. So for that, uh, maybe government can make uh, some policy or a company they can uh, start like installment. So that can help also to promote uh, our solar energy in future, not only Filipino over the world or developing countries. Thank you so much, Julia. And uh, now I would like to invite Marcelo, Mr. Marcelo. Hello, everyone. So can you hear me? Can you confirm that my audio is OK? Yeah, OK. Your audio is, the sound is very good. OK, thank you very much. So um, hello, I would like to introduce myself. Um, my name is Marcelo Calispa. I'm from Ecuador, from South America. Yes, sir. And uh, I think the, the, here in my country uh, related with this solar energy. But first of all, I would like also to um, introduce myself as my background. So I am a mechanical engineer um, and I got a master degree, a master of philosophy, in mechanical and system engineering from the University of Newcastle in, in England. Wow. And um, I studied, when I, when I did my master degree, I studied something more related with uh, biogas production. And uh, it's also related with renewable energies. But, um, Anyway, I also have a master degree in mathematics and simulation. So I'm more focusing in, in that area. But I know uh, some of the, of the renewable energies here in my country. And um, since I'm working as an undergrad lecturer, um, I'm trying to teach this, to, this kind of renewable energies to undergrad students as well. So um, from my point of view, uh, as far as I know, the, the electricity capacity and generation from my country, from Ecuador, it's most based on uh, hydropower. From the, all the electricity that we produce and we use, the 96 percentage of the electricity is produced by, uh, by uh, uh, hydropower. And um, 
only the four percentage of the the, the the four percentage of the renewable energy producing electricity it's including bioenergy geothermal wind and solar so i think in the in terms of the percentage i think solar here in ecuador it's less than 0.1 percentage so it's really really small compared to the other renewable energies but i think um the potential energy related with solar energy here in Ecuador is really, really big because, you know, we are in the kind of in the middle of, of, the, of the planet and we have a lot of radiation here. So the potential of solar energy here is it's huge. But um, probably in order to support more this kind of renewable energy, the solar energy, we need to uh, implement some economic incentives from the government. But uh, nowadays, the government is more focused on creating or building new hydropower plants. So it's because we have these uh, research resource uh, more available, and uh, the government think that it's more stable as well. So he is investing. The government is investing more money in this uh, this energy, not even in my field, not even in in the bioenergy. And they are more focusing in the in this uh, these other renewables, and also uh, we are an oil producer uh, country, so we produce a lot of oil, and also we have a uh, energy generation from from that uh, from that uh, side as well. So, uh, but I think in the future uh, the population will increase also, and the demand of energy as also will increase. So basically, we will. We need more uh, sources of energy from from all the all the sources, you know. And uh, in some point, we will also increase the the use of solar energy here. So I think in the future it will change a little bit. But uh, in general, I would say that the country will uh, still uh, keep uh, building more hydropower plants and also in investing more in wind energy, which is kind of uh, the projects the government is developing right now. So that is, uh, I could say, something related to solar energy from my, from my country. Thanks. Thank you, Marcelo. Uh, thank you for wonderful uh, presentation. You, your country is like an idol for how to utilize the, how to promote the renewable energy. Uh, I believe in future when solar car will be available, the time, yeah, maybe people try to use it and utilize it. And uh, yeah, you are, your country is the ideal for others country, like how can depend only solar, uh, sorry, renewable energy. Yeah, thank you so much for your explanation. Now I would like thank to- Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Uh, now I would like to invite uh, Srithal, Srithal, Miss Srithal, can you hear me? And anyone would like to share experience, Kaya or other anyone, uh, Birendra? Maria? Anyone? Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, that's it. Actually, today solar photovoltaic. I we we uh, already discussed about that. Uh, our country already trying to promote the solar photovoltaic energy, and uh, we will try also the solar uh, photovoltaic energy because I believe that you are all our leader from your country, and you are in the leading position in your country. So, and we also make the collaboration. This is a opportunity for us, uh, Taika, create for us uh, like uh, all in one platform and we make a collaboration and we exchange our knowledge and we can implement in our country. And that's, that is the big, um, big thing and uh, this is the way of, for sustainable development. 
making collaboration, connect with many uh, people and share the knowledge and technology and everything. Thank you so much, sir, for your, um, for your attention. Uh, tomorrow I have a session for so, uh, solar thermal and green roof, but unfortunately today I will take a vaccine. So I will switch it uh, 20. And day after tomorrow, see you again and stay safe, uh, stay safe and keep the distance uh, with your friend or when you went to outside, go to outside and uh, take care of yourself. Thank you so much, sir. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you, sir. everyone. And also, sir, if anyone would like to collaborate or anything, because I already shared my uh, email address, so please, anytime we can work together for in future also thank you sir